Can you spot the connection between this high ferritin and this low total iron binding capacity or low TIBC? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to make the connection between high ferritin and low total iron binding capacity. We're going to break down what each of these tests mean, why it's important to understand these things, and what is likely happening when you have this scenario going on. Now, keep in mind, I make these videos to help you go beyond basic health, but this is not specifically tailored for you. So please read this disclaimer before we jump into to the video details. Okay, so ferritin is the stored form of iron and TIBC is also known as total iron binding capacity. So to understand what TIBC is, first we have to explain what transferrin is. So transferrin is a molecule that transports iron. And so the test is basically measuring the capacity of the transferrin molecule to carry iron. You can think of the transferrin molecule as a car that can take on iron as a passenger or not. And there's a fixed number of cars available for transport of that iron. So as the capacity to transport goes down, it means that all the cars are basically filled up so that when TIBC is low, it's going to be very common that ferritin is also high. And that's because as the capacity of those cars gets filled up, they're getting transported more and more of it to the storage form of iron known as ferritin. In fact, the lower the capacity of those cars or the lower the TIBC, the higher we would expect the ferritin to be over time. Now, spot checking at different points, you may see different values, but over the long term, low TIBC will typically translate into a high ferritin. Now, sometimes the TIBC will be low if you're just eating a lot of iron periodically in the diet. Maybe you're taking a supplement of iron at the present moment. Other times that TIBC is going to be lower for more permanent problem like hemochromatosis or other iron overload conditions. So which is actually worse having a low TIBC or high iron saturation or high ferritin? Well, that's always going to be relative, but in a real sense, it's the TIBC, the low TIBC, that's going to be more problematic. We can also think back to the analogy with the transferrin being the car. We can say that the iron, instead of being a regular old passenger, is one of the most destructive people on the planet. And if they don't get picked up, what are they going to do with their time? Well, probably find something to damage or destroy, right? Because that's what destructive people would do. Now, if they get picked up on the car or the transferrin molecule, they won't be able to destroy anything and everything's good. If they get transferred into a ferritin molecule, equally, they aren't going to be able to destroy things. However, as the cars get filled up with passengers, there are more of these idle, destructive people floating around damaging things. This is in fact what happens when the TIBC is low over longer periods of time. It means that the iron is more likely to be unbound to something and as a result it can bounce into cell membranes and cause cell damage and destruction in the local tissues as well. So going back to our lab result, what is the connection between this relatively low total iron binding capacity and this elevated ferritin? Well, as that TIBC reaches the low 300s or less, there's less available transferrin or cars to pick up the destructive people, aka iron. And this is what occurs in people with iron overload conditions. Now, it can also occur in people that have diets that are really high high iron, but there are mechanisms in the body when you don't have hemochromatosis to prevent this kind of thing. When you do have hemochromatosis, those systems are broken down and you're just going to keep absorbing the iron. Now, in our example here, in this particular situation, typically when you have a low or low normal total iron binding capacity, you'd also expect to have a high iron saturation. But sometimes if you've donated blood recently and things like that, you're going to have a slightly different or uncoupled iron saturation and total iron binding capacity. So these things don't always work in a linear fashion, but typically when you do have a low total iron binding capacity, you are going to have a high ferritin. Now there are also situations
situations where you can have a low total iron binding capacity because you have low production of the transferrin molecule. So think of it this way, you're just not making as many cars. Now, this isn't as common, but can occur from liver disease or other genetic problems where you're not making the transferrin molecule the way that you should. So if you have specific questions on this topic, feel free to drop them in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer. If you want a more customized, useful, quicker answer, consider joining the membership. With the membership, I can give your questions a little more time and attention and make them a little bit more useful as well. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding of the connection between high ferritin and low total iron binding capacity. If it does, click on the like button and subscribe to the channel to continue getting videos like this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.